Thanks so much, friends, for being with us today. Yesterday in the broadcast, we found out that the penalty for sin has been paid. Today, we're going to talk about how the power of sin has been broken. Jesus broke the devil's power over us. And when we begin to understand it, we can begin to walk in our God-given authority and receive all of the victory that Jesus won for us. Blessings. So good to have you on the broadcast today. God is so good. We're talking about redemption. We've been sharing about redemption all week. We began in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, where it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. Mm. Thank God for the wealth of God's grace. Thank God that Jesus has paid for our freedom, for our forgiveness, pardoned us, as if our sin has never been committed uh -huh. and he paid for it by his blood. That's what we mm -hmm. talked about yesterday is the penalty of sin has been paid. Mm -hmm. And that's but the blood of Jesus paid the price for our sin. Mm -hmm. And we used all these scriptures um, that talk about how the blood um, paid for our sins. Romans 325 being justified freely through his grace, uh, it talks about, uh, and God sent for Jesus to be a propitiation, a payment through faith in his blood. I love I love that definition of justification, just as if you never sinned. When I first moved here to be a pastor, I uh, bought a house um, just like five minutes from the church at the time. And um, I, I lived on a road that was a big hill and um, coming down that hill, a lot of times there'd always be a cop there. And in the summer times <laughs> they'd usually hide and they'd be like motorcycle cops. So one, one day I was coming to church to work and I got pulled over and got a speeding ticket. And um, I went to court, <laughs> you know, a couple weeks later to, to, you know, try to get the points taken off to contest the ticket. And they said the, that the cop had never turned in the ticket. So I didn't even have to go to court over it. It was just never turned in. Hallelujah. So it's just as if I never gotten a ticket. And it was a Amen. great feeling. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to pay a fine. Didn't have to worry about points. Didn't have to worry about my insurance going up. Didn't have to have any penalty for that sin Glory I had committed. God. And um, I didn't have to, you know, wait in line or see a judge. It was just, there was no record of it. Amen. That is wonderful. That's what Jesus did for us. And you know, so many people, even though they've professed faith in Christ, they still still struggle with a lot of condemnation. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I don't want to be the person handing out judgment. Mm -hmm. I had one of my good friends call me the other day and he talked about, you know, was letting me know where he was in life and some things that had transpired. And I just told him, listen, there's no condemnation for me. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm not the judge. God is. All of what we were talking about in Hebrews, that the blood of Jesus can actually purge the conscience. The blood of Jesus can actually purge your um, your soul, your, your thinking, your 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 emotions just over, over your past. The blood of Jesus can purge that, can wash it. What can wash away my sin? What can wash, wash away that effect of sin in your life, in your past, the trauma from that, whatever? Uh, the blood of Jesus can actually purge. So we talked about yesterday that the penalty for sin has been paid. Mm -hmm. But we're going to jump into this today. I want you to begin reading in Hebrews uh, chapter 9, verse 12, and read on down through verse 15. And we're going to talk about how the power of sin has been broken. Mm. So this is uh, Hebrews 9, verse 12. It says, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Yes. Amen. So our redemption, past, present, and future has been paid for. Eternal. Mm -hmm. That's what that's talking about. Some people struggle with this idea that our future sins have already been paid for. But when you really realize it, and it really talks about it here in Hebrews 9, from here to the end of the chapter, that when Jesus died, he paid the price for all sin. Mm -hmm. From Adam, really, to the end of the world. And so all sin, eternal redemption has been paid for past, present, and future. Mm. And so he did it by his own blood. Then verse 13, Aaron, go ahead and read. 
This is for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So when we look at this in verse 13, the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of heifer, he's talking about Old Testament sacrifices. Mm. These Old Testament sacrifices dealt with the outward man, dealt with the physical man. But the New Testament sacrifice, the blood of Jesus, deals with the spiritual man, mm. the spirit of man. Proverbs says, is the candle of the Lord lighting all the inward parts of the belly. Mm. And that's what we really, you know, that's where salvation starts in the spirit of man. Mm. And he says in verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit with uh, offered himself without spot to God. Jesus did no sin, mm -hmm. yet he was judged as a sinner. He, 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 he went a sinner's <clears throat> death. He says, purge your conscience. Our conscience needs to be pur purged. Our mind, our thinking needs to be purged from dead works. We're not talking about a performance mentality. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about keeping the law. We're not talking about, you know, a religious mentality. Mm -hmm. Dead works, mm -hmm. going to church, giving your offerings, you know, reading your Bible, praying your prayers. Now, I do all those things. I pray, I go to church, I read my Bible, I give, being kind to your neighbor. But I do not trust my performance mm -hmm. for my salvation, for my healing, for my peace, mm -hmm. for my blessing. I, I trust Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he says, we need to get over a performance-based mentality. And so not only does he say that the power of sin has been broken, he says, you know what? The, the, the penalty for sin is paid, but the power of sin is broken. Mm. Sin no longer has dominion over us, Romans 6 says, because we are not under the law, but under grace. Mm -hmm. Thank God. These sacrifices that were in the Old Testament, they didn't pay the price, you know, but Jesus paid the price. The, mm. the penalty for sin has been paid and the and therefore, the power of sin has been broken. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Sin. You know, and we started in Genesis talking about the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. And, and when they sinned uh, for the first time, that's really when, when evil entered the world and the effects of sin really entered right. the world. You know, the, the effects of sin, which include, you know, just sickness, destruction. Um, poverty. Poverty. Uh, even, even natural disasters. These are all a result of sin. God often gets the blame for many of these things. <laughs> yeah. But it's really, it's not God's fault. It's the result of sin. It's the effect of sin on this earth that he created. But God created everything. Um, everything he created was good. There was no, no, nothing bad that he created. Yes. Um, everything bad that people experience on the on the earth today, it's a result of sin. It's a, it's an effect of that, but we can tap into the power of redemption. Yeah, the power of the blood of Jesus. And when we think about this, talking about how the power of sin has been broken, mm -hmm. um, 1 Peter 1.18 says that you know that you were not redeemed with, you know, a silver and gold from your vain behavior learned by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Mm -hmm. We have been redeemed. We've been bought out of this vain lifestyle, mm -hmm. this empty, futile, you know, vain behavior. And, you know, some people, I, I'll tell you a teaching I hate. I hate the teaching on generational curses. Mm -hmm. That is in no way New Testament. Mm -hmm. This scripture right here is another scripture. That proves it. It is not in the New Testament anywhere. Mm -hmm. I've seen people blame their dad, blame their mm -hmm. granddad. Pathetic. Mm -hmm. It's just an excuse for sorry living. You know, Jesus redeemed us from that. It says the blood of Jesus redeemed us from the vain behavior received by tradition from mm -hmm. our fathers. Mm -hmm. Listen, there are sinful lifestyles that are received by tradition. They are learned. Mm -hmm. but they are not, this is not inherited as a spiritual condition. Mm -hmm. God is your father when you believe on Jesus and you receive the spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. So you cannot receive a generational curse from God your father. Mm -hmm. That is ludicrous thinking. 
That will keep you in bondage. That will not free you. That will not give you victory. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's a bunch of our friends that teach some of these crazy things sometimes. But we have been bought with the blood of Jesus, a lamb without blemish and without spot. Mm -hmm. The blood will never lose its power. Mm -hmm. The songwriter wrote, mm -hmm. praise God. So not only has the penalty of sin been paid, but the power of sin has been broken. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's go on over to Hebrews. Since we're in Hebrews, let's look at Hebrews 13 and let's read it at verse uh, 20. And verse 21, Hebrews 13, 20 and 21, he's kind of coming to a conclusion. He's talking about this great new covenant that we have. But he says, now the God of peace, he says, who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. This is an everlasting covenant. Oh. This, praise God, we have the the final covenant, we have the final payment, the blood of Jesus. He says, make you complete, make you whole, make you perfect. Now look at this, in every good work, that blood that changed your spirit affects your body. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you, in your spirit. It works spirit, soul, and body, mm. that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus, to whom be glory forever and ever. The power of sin is broken. Mm -hmm. We really don't have any more excuses. Mm -hmm. We need to quit making excuses for sinful living and start renewing our mind to the gospel. Mm -hmm. Start renewing our mind to what the Bible says. Aaron, read Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 5, Paul says this in verse 17, that we've received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, really through faith in Jesus. Now, when we did that, we went from the reign of sin and death to the reign of grace and righteousness through faith in Jesus. Sin no longer has dominion over us. And in Romans 6, he's saying this is how we live as those uh, new covenant believers. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, we're, we're free from sin. We're dead to sin, right? We're free from sin. But then he says, we have authority over it. Uh -huh. So there's four reasons you shouldn't sin in Romans 6. You're free from it, you're dead to it, you have authority over it, and it'll kill you. So right here in Romans 6 to 12, 12 to 14, he's talking about this aspect uh -huh. of freedom from sin. So it says here, Romans 6, starting in verse 12, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. I See, love that. We've come into this new covenant. Sin doesn't lord over us. Mm -hmm. Sin doesn't rule over us or reign over us. Mm -hmm. He says, let not sin therefore reign in your... What's understood in that sentence? You. You, you don't let sin. You right. take authority over it. You, we, I got this revelation when I went to Lester Summerall School. I have authority over sin and lust just like I have authority over sickness or anxiety mm -hmm. or poverty. Mm -hmm. I've been given authority. Yeah, if you present your if you present yourself to the enemy to to, to sin. Mm -hmm. You're going to get run over. It's not going to be a good thing. You need to present yourself to God. Serve God. Be a servant to Him. And that's you know, I, years ago, I had a student. Uh, I, I play flute and taught a lot of flute um, students um, years back in uh, when I was um, working on my doctorate in Houston. And um, one of my students had a friend that that took their instrument, their musical instrument, and left it in the driveway, and their parents backed over it oh, with God. their Suburban. So that's like presenting yourself <laughs> as an instrument of unrighteousness. The devil is going to run all over you, and uh, you're a lot better off presenting yourself as an instrument of righteousness unto God. Amen. Praise God. I know you You won't even let some people touch your flute. <laughs> yeah, we just had a Christmas Eve service not too long ago here at church, and we were taking a big picture after, and someone offered to hold my flute for me while we we're taking pictures. And I said, no, I don't. I actually don't let anyone. <laughs> you had a I brand present new my flute. instruments to no one. Uh, so. An alto flute. Mm -hmm. The Japanese yen was down. So God blessed you, and you Amen. got a great deal. Yeah. But, uh, you know, hallelujah. 
you know, we have dominion. We mm-hmm. have authority over sin. He says, sin shall not have dominion over you because you're not under the law. Again, we've got to get out of that performance mentality and we've got to get into a grace mentality. This mm-hmm. is not me, but this is Jesus. Mm-hmm. And because Jesus did this, you know, Paul says this in Galatians 2.20, it's no longer me that lives, but it's Christ who lives in me. Mm-hmm. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Mm-hmm and gave himself for me. So just let Jesus live his life big in you. We're going to be back right after this break, and we'll continue to talk about how the power of sin has been broken. Mm. And when you break the power of sin, guess what? The promise Mm. comes alive to you. You can receive all the promises of God because Jesus has already paid the price for you to live victory over sin and live in his promises. We'll be right back. Blessings. Friends, I'm so glad you've been watching. Today we've been teaching on the subject of redemption and who we are in Christ. This is some of my best teaching. In fact, I got a revelation of this over 40 years ago in Andrew Womack's meetings uh, when I was just a child and it revolutionized my life. And I believe if you get a revelation of who you are in Christ and what happened in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, it will literally transform your life. And so we have a lot of great teaching on redemption, what Jesus did for us in his death, burial, and resurrection, and who we are in Christ. I encourage you to get this teaching. I believe just like it transformed my life, it will transform your life. So get on the internet, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, and God bless you richly as you allow his word first place. Thank you, friends, for staying tuned. Praise God. The good news is the power of sin has been broken and the penalty for sin has been paid. And when we begin to understand that, it literally transforms the way that we live our lives. Mm. We begin to walk in dominion. Now, I want to go back to the book of Colossians. And Colossians is actually talking about the lordship of Jesus Christ. But in Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 to verse 14, we'll read it again, Aaron, and I love it in your translation. I want you to read it there in the New King James Version. It's just so powerful. It's powerful in the King James, but Mm -hmm. New King James, verse 12 to verse 14. So it says here um, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So, you know, we give thanks to God who has qualified us. Mm. Read that again. Verse 12, qualified us. Mm -hmm. Giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the life. So I'm qualified for God's best blessings. Mm -hmm. Through the blood of Jesus. And he's the one who qualified us. Amen. You know, Andrew Womack says this, that no one, God has not ever had anyone qualified working for him yet. Mm -hmm. You know, but what qualifies us is the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we can actually read this and, and we'll study it more next week as we continue to teach on redemption that um, not only did the blood free us from the power of sin, right? Pay the penalty of sin. The blood secured the promise for us, Mm -hmm. and the blood qualified us Mm. uh, to minister. Mm. We're qualified to minister through the blood. Mm -hmm. And and so all these things are powerful. Now, in verse 13, Colossians 1.13, it says that we are freed from the power of darkness. Death, darkness, the devil has no more dominion over us. Mm -hmm. He says... Be and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we're freed from the power of darkness. We've been translated into the kingdom of the sons of God's love. Yeah, the, the kingdom of, of light, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Jesus is a kingdom of authority. That's one thing that people noticed about Jesus when he preached was that he preached with authority. Yeah. And even the centurion, when he approached Jesus, he said, you are a person of authority. Right. And that's one thing that's been restored to us through redemption is authority. Yeah. Paul actually says this in Ephesians 5, 8. He says, you were sometimes Mm. darkness, but now you are light in Mm. the Lord. Walk 
as children of the light. You were dark. We're no longer dark. Mm -hmm. We're light. We got the light of God in mm -hmm. us. And light overcomes darkness. You know what? You can curse the darkness, mm -hmm. but that doesn't, it won't leave. Mm -hmm. But if you turn on the light, darkness leaves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, another uh, one of the epistles, Paul says this, you walked in them when you lived in them. Mm -hmm. We don't live there anymore. Mm -hmm. We live in a new place. Praise God. There's a lot of darkness in the world today, but we don't have to just go out and point everything that's dark. Right. Uh, we just, can just let be, your light shine. Just be the light. Just let your light shine before men. Yeah. And they'll, they'll glorify God. People will see that light and they, it'll bring glory to God. And he says this right here in Ephesians 5, 8, you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you realize who you are, it will change how you live. Mm -hmm. He says, walk as children of the light. Mm -hmm. Just be who you are. Let your light shine. Mm -hmm. Man, thank God we got the light of Jesus in us. Now, in Colossians, I wanted to continue to talk about this a little bit. Uh, Colossians chapter 1 and we were in verse 12 and verse 13. It says we've been set free. We've been delivered. We've been translated mm. into the kingdom of God's dear son. Your, your uh, new King James says we've been conveyed. Mm -hmm. We are no longer in the kingdom of darkness. We're in the kingdom of light. Mm -hmm. So we need to live like the children of God. Mm -hmm. He says in whom we have redemption, we have freedom. Mm -hmm. we, we're, we're rid <laughs> Glory to God. One meaning of that word redemption of polytrosis is riddance. Mm. We're rid of the devil and his power. Glory to God. Don't give it, don't give him, don't give him the time of day. Mm -hmm. uh, through the blood, we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness, the complete pardon of our sins as if they were never committed. Mm -hmm. Now I want to go and talk a little bit from Colossians chapter 3. He goes on in Colossians 1 and talks about Jesus as Lord of creation. He created all things. Then he talks about Jesus as the Lord of the earth when he died and rose again. But then he talks about in Colossians 2, Jesus is Lord of the grave. Mm. Because when he died, he went to the grave and conquered the devil. Mm. And so when we look at this beginning in Colossians, let's, let's begin in verse 9. For in him, in Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. Mm -hmm. Aaron, you're complete. Mm -hmm. Were you complete before you got married? Yes. You were because you're complete in Jesus. Was your wife, Heather, complete before she married you? Yes. Because she's complete in Christ. Completeness, wholeness comes from Jesus and not a person. Mm -hmm. You are complete. Jesus is the one who completes you. Mm -hmm. When you get two whole complete people together, get in agreement, mm -hmm. man, you've got amazing authority. You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and authority. In whom, in Christ, you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. In uh in the putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. You are buried. Now, this is what we've got to do. We've got to begin to identify with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Paul says in Romans 6, verse 10, reckon yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive to God. Mm -hmm. Reckon, count it done. Mm -hmm. Count it done. We're buried with him in baptism. So when we died, we died to sin. When mm -hmm. we live, we live to God. He says, wherein you're risen through faith, of the operation of God. You put faith in what God did in the person of Jesus when he raised him from the dead, who has raised Jesus from the dead, him from the dead, Jesus from the dead. Now look at this in verse 13. He says, you being dead, I'm in Colossians 2 verse 13, in the trespasses of your sin and, and, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he made to live together with him, having forgiven you of all trespasses. You are forgiven for how many sins? All. Oh. You're forgiven for all your sin. Man, no matter how big, how little, how gray, how, you know, we think of sin that way. God says all sin, sin. But Jesus forgave you for them all. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to show you what forgiveness does. He says in verse 14, blotting out the handwritten uh, handwriting of ordinances, the law was against us. It showed us how sinful sin was. And he says, which was contrary to us, and he took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Mm -hmm. Jesus went to the cross and nailed sin to the cross. Mm -hmm. Man, the penalty for sin has been paid. Mm -hmm. The power of sin has been broken. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. Mm -hmm. Jesus stripped the devil of his power and authority. Mm -hmm. He took captivity captive and gave gifts to men. 
and he, he triumphed over them. Jesus literally, I believe, led a, a prayed around hell saying, I'm the king here. Mm -hmm. Jesus was king of heaven, creating all things. He was king of earth when he walked on there, died, took our sins, prayed the price for our sins, but he's also Lord over the grave. Mm -hmm. And now he rose from the grave, said, I am he who lives and was dead. Behold, I have the keys of hell and death, Revelation mm -hmm. 118. And behold, I am alive forevermore, amen. Jesus mm -hmm. has the keys. But what gave the devil power in humanity's life in the first place? We talked about this in, on Monday. What gave Satan power over man? When they sinned. When they sinned. Mm -hmm. So now that we're forgiven for all sin, what's that do for us? We're, we have power through Jesus. We have authority over the devil because mm -hmm. of Jesus. We have authority over sin because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's what is being said right here. What gave Jesus authority, what gives you authority is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Praise God. You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and all power. The devil is not who he used to be, praise God, because mm -hmm. Jesus broke his power in his death and resurrection. You know, the Bible says if the princes of the world would have known what was happening when they crucified the Lord of glory, they never would have done it. That's in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 8. They thought they had it in a bag, but mm -hmm. praise God, Jesus went and destroyed the power of the devil mm -hmm. and rose from the dead victorious and gave us authority, and we walk in authority. Amen. You know, you boys, you and your brothers, you guys walk in a lot of victory. I believe part of it's because you understand your authority in Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. We've got to get back to an understanding of our authority in Christ. Mm -hmm. And when you understand that, you'll quit letting the devil run over you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus through death destroyed him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and delivered us who through the fear of death all of our lifetime were subject to bondage. Praise Amen. God for redemption. Praise God that the penalty for sin has been paid and the power of sin has been broken. Amen. Jesus is Lord over death, hell, and the grave, and he's my Lord. Friends, if you want to get this information, you can go to our website today, charischristiancenter.com. You can watch this free of charge or get all of these teachings on our website at charischristiancenter.com. Blessings. You have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The power of sin is broken and you are no longer a sinner, but a saint. Get the redemption package, which includes redemption and in Christ realities on either CD or digital download for $37 when you call 719-418-4000 or visit charischristiancenter.com. Hi friends, I'm so excited about our family camp meeting coming up June 7th through 11th, 2023. We're gonna have great meetings for your youth, for your children, for adults, special worship. It is gonna be a great time together. We're gonna to see lots of people set free by the power of God. So save the date, June 7th through 11th, here in Colorado Springs, Colorado at Karis Christian Center Family Camp Meeting. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at PO Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.